sitting in the Supreme Court uh, to hear a case brought on appeal from my learned friends in the Court of Appeal in the matter of Hussey and Tremens. Uh, this case was decided by my colleague, Mr. Justice Bruce, in the High Court. Um, it was appealed successfully in the Court of Appeal, and we are here to consider the third appeal brought by, I believe, Mr. Hussey against uh, Sir Delirio Tremens. I understand that counsel for the appellant is Mr. Ramzan Kamoto, host of you for Wimby. Uh, perhaps you could remind me who is senior counsel. Mr. Kamoto, thank you. And I understand that counsel for the uh, respondent uh, is Ms. Chawezi Chawa and Ms. Atopet Chawaya. Perhaps you could remind me who is senior counsel. Without further ado, um, I would call upon Mr. Kamoto uh, to open the argument for the appellant. The appellant seek to appeal on the grounds that Mr. Fussy can indeed rely on the occupiers by the Act 1957. Um, so the first step would logically be who is an occupier? Who is an occupier of an area? So an occupier is defined in Newton Lake 1 as any person who controls the uh, premises, right, or a piece of land. Now, to control premises, you do not have to be, you do not have to be the owner of that premises. But in this case, Mr. Tremens owns the house, and at, at the very least, he is in control of the tank. So it is reasonable to assume that Mr. Tremens qualifies. What are premises? Well, premises are any land, building, stadium, or any movable object, right? A lift can be premises. Um, a tractor can be premises. So if an excavating machine, which is of a similar structure to a tank, maybe not a plane or as dangerous, but a similar structure to a tank can be held as premises, then surely we can, we can consider a tank premises as well. So the second test is therefore met. Implied permission is different. Implied permission is circumstantial. A delivery man, for example, has an implied permission to be on the land. He is willing to deliver goods. Right? Now, with the same example, if a delivery man, for example, forgets, forgets or makes a mistake with the address, and instead of going to Gomes Academy, he goes to the next um, the, uh, the town, the hospital, or whatever. If he messes up the address and goes there, does that person become a trespasser right away? No. The person becomes a trespasser. If at the board he's then told nonsense, please get out. But because the damage is done before that point, finally, um, as we have now established that the premises do belong to the occupier, Mr. Jones, um, and that Mr. Fassi is a lawful visitor, we must now go. Um, so we've established that there's a duty of care um, and so on. Right? As he has not provided against the tank. We could assume that um, this determinant has fallen beneath the standard of care. So therefore, as he as we have established that there is a duty of care, he has fallen beneath the standard of care, and the damage is done. This part believes that Mr. Fassi must be compensated in full for the damage done to his Ferrari. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
vice are under the traditional form of lodging except to abstain from a willful misconduct. A willful misconduct is that which is performed with the act is not act to know it, but in this case, Tremens was just doing his passion, which is very good time. Since they was trespassing on private property, and Tremens here, and Tremens was not aware that he and the car were available at the, at the moment, at the time of the accident, the defendant here does not owe any duty of care. Moreover, the defendant here also has no obligation to worry for any obvious risk. Um, the driver would have least escorted the tank to its huge size, because obviously you know that the tank is coming, maybe because of the noise or something, and its size or any max left on the property area. Um, therefore, since the tort of negligence applies when the claimant's injury or loss is caused by a defendant's failure to take reasonable care in a situation where the defendant owes um, a claimant the duty of care, in this case, the defendant has no duty. The negligence act Ground two of the appeal states that the common law negligence action arises not from injury or damage on privacy as a result of some negligent activity and the entire suit that the 1957 Act. I don't think it's clear. Basically, all the error is not going to apply for privacy since he wasn't there in the accident. Was But 
Francesca by the highway and then walk to the front door. So, with a man of choice. Um, she also mentioned that what would be the outcome if, if the driver was still in the car? But we wouldn't be discussing all this if the person didn't go there in the first place. So I also think that that would be the